Bad. Tell me a little bit about this bat here. Well, this is one of the, one of the bats I had. The Grant and the Negro League. This is called my home run, Pete. When I get ready to hit some home, this is my special bat. And uh, the Louisville Slugger. I said, not forget. And I like the grip of it. And when they pitch the pitch, I'm ready. I can swing it like lightning. But I didn't hit nothing over Satchel, though. Mm -hmm. No, not Satchel, Pete. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I hit some home runs. A lot of home runs. But not off of Sasha. Okay. No, Sasha he, he had a pitcher. He would he would hit he would a great pitcher that could pitch to you and he never hit a home run or hit him twice in succession. So he remember you. He always oh, Sasha the greatest I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Well let, let me ask you a question then. Now there was a story about was that you that uh I can go ahead now. Is that you that uh, it was telling you a story about when Satchel Page was pitching and he had to call all the players. That's, that's true, yeah. Okay, was that against your team? No, it wasn't against my team. But tell me that story about Satchel. Was Sam, is, uh, he was pitching at a, uh, Boca Neal was on first base and Satchel was pitching the particular game. I, was going where, I don't know where he was, but they were playing. He was a cancer tomorrow. And uh, someone in the stand told Satchel he was overrated really dark and that he could not pitch, he was not that great a pitcher. And Buck O'Neill was on first, and he heard what the guy in the stand said, and he said, Satch, did you hear what the guy called you? Overrated on. He said, what you gonna do about it? Satch turned around, going toward the outfield, and Beck going to come in. He said, man, what you doing, Satch? He said, I want to come in and sit down. He said, sit down. He said, Satch, it's men on base here. Let them make a difference. He called the infield in. He said, fellas, y'all go sit down. Take a seat and down. So he said, I don't need nobody but the kitchen. The base was loaded, and he said, the first guy come to bat, Satch struck him out. The second guy, three pitches. Satch just struck him out, the second guy. And the third guy, Tony, Satch just struck him out, and he sat down the guy and said, you know what? I've never seen that happen before in my life. You're the best I've ever seen. Yeah, he told Satchel. He apologized. He said, no, no. You're the best I ever was. That's Satchel. That happened. Yeah. No, Satchel's great. He had a fast ball and you wouldn't hit it. And if you hit him, he remembers. That's one thing about Satchel. he never forget what you hit off of him. He said, you never see that same picture again, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Satchel's great. He was good. Yeah, he, he still had a minute batter, and I didn't get no hit. I said, I didn't get no hit on Ron Satchel. Oh, no, no. Because Satchel, he was good. Great pitchers I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. We got some, some live pitchers, like you asked about Smokey Joe Williams. He was, he was born 18, 1895, and some of his older than Satchel. But he had a fastball that he struck out the whole team, 29 back. Uh, yeah, the whole team. You know, his in nine innings. And he, but another pitcher still got 17, but he won the game, won another overtime. Uh, his name, uh, Smokey Joe Williams, I see him, a pitcher. He said he had a, he had a fastball and a drop off the table that he couldn't touch. But I don't remember him, because like I said, he, he was born in 18 something, 1850, I think it was, before I was there. Now you came through at the same time that Roy Campanella came. Oh yeah, well, okay, yeah, I played against him. Yeah. He, was, was he, was he, he was a catcher. Right? Catcher, he was a catcher. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. When Raw and Satchi got together, that was it.
he had a lot of disadvantages. I said, no, it wasn't. All that abrasion, it didn't make no difference. Yeah, oh, we play because we love the game, too. And I do it again because I just like to play baseball. And I, I find, I tell the kids, they, go, no, they want to play basketball now, but baseball is something, there's more players on baseball than in basketball. Yeah, and I said, go ahead and try it. You can make it easy. Yeah, I said, and there's a lot of money. My salary was three hundred dollars a month. That's what I made. Three hundred. The kids said, "Mr. Mike, you were rich." I said, "I'm not, son. I wasn't rich. I just made. I made three hundred dollars a month. But I could buy about a pop for a nickel. I get loaf of bread for a nickel. I get two scoops of ice cream sometimes for a nickel. Yeah, that's what it's like, and, and I made it. Yeah, it wasn't hard. I ain't trying to who would I? I wouldn't worry about how, how much that money I was getting. I want to play baseball, and I did. Because all along I said my grandpa had taxed me all along. Try to keep it up, but one day you're going to be a great ball player, and so it happened. Yeah, and I'm enjoying it today, like I said, and people ask me how it was, I said it was easy, and I enjoyed it. I'm not complaining, I'm just explaining. That's all. Well, how would you compare the baseball players of your era versus the baseball players today? There's no comparison, Tony. I said, as I said before, we play for love again. Now they're playing for money and uh, things for themselves. Individual players. They come out now with baggy pants. They come with dreadlocks. Yeah, and then they got steroids. We didn't have that, Tony. No. We played with the national league, God given talent we had to play baseball. That was over here. And you play hard. Just for love again. We didn't have nobody coming to rubbing us down. If we got hurt, we still played. I said, I would get one game. I was sick. And I told the manager, Jim Taylor, I said, I can't play tonight. We went, we went Omaha to Brassie. Told me I was sick. I had thrown up all my food and everything. I was sick. And the manager said, said, you you got to play because you're in the lineup. I said, Coach, man, I said, Step, I can't make it. He said, I'm sorry, but you got to play tonight. So on the whole, I got in the uniform. I got out there and I played. Kind of bad hit a home run. <laughs> and that again he said, Now look, you be sure you take sick tomorrow, nigga. You going <laughs> But that was real life, and like I say, I enjoyed it. And uh, there were times of horror, but still, we got the chance to play, and I enjoyed it. And I met a lot of great ball players, played with a great ball such as those players, and ain't all the ball players I played are in the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame. But I played with them, enjoyed them. We didn't make it out of money, but that life was a great experience. Incredible experience for me to learn how to play baseball and meet these guys, which I never would have met if I stayed here in San Luis. Yeah, no, it's worth it. And I'll do it again. I said, I enjoyed it. It's a great experience. And I said, so how many, how many living Negro League baseball players are there today? Today it's probably, it might be over 50 or 60. I mean, that, if I'm correct, it's not over 60. But we lose some every day. And I tell people, you know, they don't realize we up in the 80s and 90s, and every time we bury a Negro player, we say goodbye to a person who can tell us about the history of the Negro League. We were just about the glory, the glory of our time we had. I said glory of our time. But we had fun back then. You know? And I, like I said, we're not complaining. We're just happy that we can tell it and live this long. Because we're losing guys every, every month. Yeah, we're losing players. But uh, like I say, I'm blessed. I woke up this morning. I'm singing that song. I woke up this morning with my feet on Jesus. 